Got it. Pause. Excellent. What? We are now recording. I'm hoping. <laughs> there we go. I'm hoping that I get like professional sports, but my main goal is like a singing career. But if that doesn't work, then sports. But if that doesn't work, then like probably Instagram. But I'm gonna try and do Instagram and like sports or singing at the same time. Sure. Makes sense. Now, when you say singing, what is it that you want to do? What kind of music do you like to sing? I'd say like kind of like sad love songs, but I can do I sometimes I do like other stuff. I've done like country, but I just wasn't very good at it because well, I mean, I, I'm pretty good. I just don't really do it very much. So I'm not used to it. You say you like to sing the sad love songs. So, like, what for example, what are the songs you like to sing? Like, what songs, for example? Let's say you were going to go sing for America's Got Talent. What song would you choose for them? Uh, probably Golden Hour. Okay. Here you go. Or uh, Arcade. Small Town. Uh, I don't know what people say, but I'm pretty sure it's called arcade cool cool so, now yeah. have you have you performed on the stage before on stage no no never do you get camera shy or, or not camera shy but do you get like stage like in as far as like performance guys do you ever get stage fright or get nervous on front of people i don't think so i i did when i was younger but i mean not anymore that's a good thing. I sing in front of my class, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. Now, um, you know, that's an important thing. That's one of the things you need to get. That's one of the things that you have, people have to get over is that fear of being in front of people when it comes to performing on a stage. Um, way, way back in the day, I mean, one of the things I had to do, I did stage plays back when I was younger. Uh, before I got into sports. Well, I was always kind of into sports, but. Um, I did stage plays and stuff like that. So I just sing in a lot of those types of things. So that helped a little bit because I was very shy <laughs> when I was younger versus, you know, how I am now. Yeah. But it's a work in progress, though. Now, I, I heard you, you wrestle. You, now, when you say you wrestled, did you wrestle for your high school team or did you wrestle for like a like a, a private it company? It is for your school. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, this is my know, first year too. Your first year? How'd you how'd you think you did? Uh pretty good. Pretty how good. You, I almost got um third place. How did you like it? In my tournament. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um hard, definitely. But it is it is hard. I had to fight right? the same guy. I had to fight the same guy I fought in the beginning. <laughs> and I almost immediately lost to that guy because uh, he, like, jabbed his fingers into my side and rolled me over. So <laughs> I got pinned there. That sounds like then an I had illegal to move again, right there. Which no one saw it, so they didn't call it. But then <laughs> the second time I fought him, it was for third place. Hmm. And um, I lasted a lot longer than I did the first time. I lasted like maybe two or three rounds, maybe like 20, 30 minutes. I see. Now, because I mean, I did wrestling for in high school for four years in high school. It's a very interesting thing. It's, def it's different than the wrestling I did now. Um, but, I, but prior to that, I did martial arts. So I was used to kind of, you know, kicking and, and fighting people. But, um, like as far as the high the high school wrestling stuff, that helps you keep in shape, right? Because that's a lot of work to get involved within the sport, right? How long was your practice? Pretty pretty long, right? How long is my practice? That's a yeah. two hours. That sounds like about two, right. Two thirty to four thirty. Yep. So you must be in pretty good shape then. That's a, that's a good thing. It helps you stay in shape anyway. Wrestling, you gotta. You know, one of the biggest things about wrestling is staying within your weight class, right? Yeah. Nice, nice. What weight class are you in? Uh, 100. 
That's a good one. That's I good. was I was ninety eight because I dropped uh, I dropped pounds. Mm-hmm. I see. But normally I'm. Well, if there was a hundred class, then I'd be in a hundred. Yeah. See. Now, did you have a lot of power and stuff like that when you were running? You know, I mean, obviously you would know how what your style is. Like, did you have a lot of power behind thing, or you were more of a finesse kind of a person? You know what I mean? A little bit of both, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like go in for the legs or anything. I'd kind of mm-hmm. wait for them to go for me and then put in a move. Uh huh. I got you. Like a spot. Got you. Yeah, I get that part. That's good stuff. Um, I always, I always enjoyed the takedowns. I found once I took the person down, there was not a lot they could do about it after I took them down. And the best part about it was just um, the human chest capacity, trying to figure out what they were going to do before they did. Right. Yeah. Now, um, I'm just, I'm just surprised it ended already. Your wrestling season. A lot of people are still doing the wrestling, so it's interesting. Um, it's all right though. It's nothing wrong. Well, with ended that. in started. I think I started in October. It lasted like a month, and like a half, a month and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what are the now? What are the things you liked about wrestling versus what are the things you didn't like about wrestling? Things I liked, um, I got to hang out with my buddies. Mm-hmm. I got to learn new moves and try harder every day. But one of the things I didn't like is it was really, really, really hard. And people were probably, like, at least if a year or more experienced than me. So. Yeah, well, that's this year. Next year, you're going to be more experienced than they are, right? Yeah. Did you practice outside of wrestling, oh, like outside of school too, or just you just did it at school? Uh-huh. I just did it at school this year. I see. This is my, this is my second year doing sports because the first year I did sports, mm-hmm. I did soccer. I did soccer. Nothing wrong with soccer. Did you like soccer better than wrestling or no? And uh, no. Yeah, well, I mean, not. I like them. Both of them really good. I've always loved soccer, but mm-hmm. I also lo- I also love too but because mm-hmm. re- my legs are really strong that's a good so thing. i'm able to get around that. that's good you know what's interesting is that both of those sports you just mentioned are two of the most grueling and the hardest of all of the high school sports um and i think when i first started you know playing sports i i myself did not expect it to be as grueling as it was um soccer practice was about three hours after school and it was non-stop running <laughs> and then um for the most part there's one high school is because they don't have middle school where he's from or i don't think so but well i mean middle school is also good too middle school middle school they have a wrestling team they have various soccer teams and stuff like that too um and whatnot But it's a lot of running, which is good. Yeah, middle school. Um. Uh. Apparently, they didn't. Um. They didn't have middle school. Like where I used, they used to not have middle school. Like a few years ago. Oh, hold on! Mm-hmm. I forgot to turn off. Turn my thing back on. Yeah. <laughs> but they used to have uh, middle school. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> They used to not have middle school where I, or my places, and like maybe twenty years ago, I think. I got you. See, how do you like school? Yeah, it's like. Are you, are you a fan of school or no? Eh, I don't mind it. I'm not. I mean, I'm doing okay. I'm passing. Yeah, that's a good thing. But, right. Yeah, I'm just not very good at school i'm i'm used to being like street smart because i am street smart i'm not very much book smart street smarts are good too a a lot of people don't understand the differences between the two can you can you give us an example what street smarts is for those people who aren't aware what that is because that's a very valuable tool a lot of people lack those things yeah so like street smarts are like 
like survival skills technically mm-hmm. like knowing what you're dealing with book smarts are like knowing what like what you're dealing with like like reading about it and like knowing what's about it but street smarts are knowing how to use it that's a great example see i knew you were smart see i knew that i get that it's good stuff and you're right. That's exactly what that is. And I think that's something that some people lack that those things. I think a lot of people take for granted um, street smarts which they need to survive almost every day versus things you learn in a book, right? There's definitely things you'll yeah. learn more doing things versus reading about it, right? Yeah. yeah There's you know. like, um, I've, I've built fires my whole entire life and then once uh it was uh i think something happened with the inside furnace or something or we ran out of wood so it so my uncle had to go uh cut wood but we had to start a fire outside first in the winter but obviously we had coats and stuff and it's still and the fire just burnt out so it was already warm but he went to go cut down wood and i built a fire outside and i was just chilling by the fire there you go for like an hour good just times talking. You like fires and stuff like that, like fire, like a nice like fire pit kind of an idea, like cooking out and stuff like that. Yeah, I live in the woods, that's why. So it's my uncle. I'm definitely with the woods. I spend a lot of times in the woods. I love hiking and things of that nature. Anyway, um, do you prefer being outside versus inside, or do you prefer being inside and go well, out when you I, need to? I would rather be outside all, all times because I really love the outdoors. But I've done so many things outside at the house. So why didn't it flip my camera? <laughs> there we go. Here you are. Welcome back. So, but yeah, I would rather be outside the whole time. I got gotcha. you. Because the only reason I'm on my phone and stuff is because there's nothing to do outside because I've already done all of it when I was younger. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of got bored of it, but if I, if like we lost internet or something, or you know, if we lost internet or something, I would have stuff to do. Mm-hmm. I could go explore, and make forts, mm-hmm. and like bunkers and stuff with a fire. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Do you like animals and stuff like that, or no? Oh uh, yeah, I like animals. Yeah, what are, what are like your favorite animals do you run into? Because if you're in the woods, you got to deal with all kinds of animals, then, right? My favorite animals to run to, run into are like probably like deers. Yeah, deers are awesome because they're, they're always like, yeah, they're like pretty chill, and I mean they run, they'll obviously run if you get too close, but you can they'll just stand there and and watch you. Yeah, do you tend to get along with animals and stuff like that? Like the animals drawn to you, or do they kind of tend to run away or whatever? Uh, most of them are like they just kind of like sniff around me for a bit, and then for like if like maybe like ten minutes, and then they come to say hi and lay next to me so I can pet them. Here you go, here you go. What's wrong with that? Animals are cool. That's actually a fun. Uh, okay. That's a cool thing. I actually animals are something I've always had a pretty close connection with. I've always kind of had a connection with, especially wild animals. Apparently that's something that my mother had on her side. Um, everyone on my mother's side of the family had some type of wild animal that was associated with to them for some reason. And um, like various wild animals are drawn to us for some reason. Like my uncle had chipmunks. The, like Chipmunks would come up and hang out with my uncle. My mother had a blue jay that we used to hang around with her and used to hang up on her shoulder and stuff. Me, <laughs> I had a muskrat. Go figure. Random. But then other things, obviously, too, like deer and other types of things. I love bats, personally. I'm a bat person. I love bats. I can just sit there for hours watching bats. But I get along with all animals. A lot of people, like, a lot of the animals that people don't like, I tend to give a little bit more love to. Like, you know, a lot of an- people don't like raccoons or possums or skunks or deer. You know, I'd be surprised how many people don't like a lot of those animals. They see them as vermin or annoyances, and I don't bother them, and they don't bother me. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't really mind bear, 
as long as they don't like come attacking me or something. You said bear? But, um Yeah. Oh yeah, you got But it. I don't really I We've been uh me and my brother when he used to uh live with us in his uh camper. He would have like a he he would he's the hunter of the family. Yeah. But he would have a couple of and he gave me like a um uh what was it? It was like a sniper type thing. I think mm -hmm. it was like a twenty two sniper. Yeah. Or he put a scope on it. But we went out and um there was two bear there's uh I think black bear or grizzly bear or something. Mm -hmm. And there was just two bears chilling. Mm -hmm. Like maybe like twenty like a hundred feet away. Yep. And they looked at us and and they just looked at us and we just went the other way. Like did that's he probably, turn to the other side? That's pro that's probably smart. <laughs> Cause uh that might have just yeah. Hmm. Now, they are just, you a hunter? Do you us. like hunting? Uh, yeah, but I, but we made a rule in our family: if we if we kill it, we have to eat it. That's and smart. my brother killed a squirrel. My brother killed a squirrel when he was younger, and he and he ate it, no problem, because he didn't mind squirrels; they're still meat. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny you said squirrels. I know how that works too. There's actually. Uh... When I go, there's a huge park where I'm from in the center of Boston. There's a huge place called um, uh, Boston Common. And there's a huge, used to call it public gardens because it's all basically woods. And it's in the middle of the city. So it doesn't actually fit with the rest of the, like this big, beautiful, like, like park area. And then outside they got the big skyscrapers and everything else around it. It doesn't really fit, but the squirrels love me when I get there. So there's a lot of squirrels that come looking for me whenever I'm in the thing. It's quite interesting. And uh, people usually tend to run the other way when they see the squirrels uh, because they become very, very friendly with people in the city, especially. Dude. But it's cool. Well, yeah, there's all people all the time. Yeah. Well, also people, you know, people like to feed them sometimes. I don't. Uh, because that just promotes bad ideas. But in general, they like they come to me anyway. So it's cool. It is what it is. I'm used to it. Uh, are there animals you're not overly fond of? Um, Probably moose. Moose? Because they, yeah, if they don't care if you're friendly or not, they will still attack you either way. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Little moose. baby moose? Um, I've been. There you go. Yep. You know, here's a fun fact for you. You probably don't know this, but this is a cool one. So where I'm from in Boston, there's actually a law that states that when you're driving, you if there's something in the road, you are allowed to hit it if you can't avoid hitting it. If you can't avoid it and it's going to cause an issue, you're, you're allowed to hit it. If it's a deer or anything smaller than that. However... There is one thing that you're not allowed to hit, and that's a uh, that's a moose, of all things. So, the law states that you can hit a deer, you can hit a deer if you want, but you can't hit a moose, which is the most ridiculous rule ever. Because I'm like, if you're gonna hit either one, you're gonna mess your car up anyway. It doesn't really matter. It, you hit something, you're a jerk anyway. But yeah, that's a fun fact. Like you can hit it's, a deer. This one's bigger than the other. What happened? Um, well, it, well, just one's heavier than the other. So, uh, my, uh, I think it was someone that in our family or like someone that knew our family, they, uh, hit a moose and like their car got smashed, but they hit a deer and it, like kind of, kind of, uh, like down to the front, but they just, the deer just slid off the road. Yeah. That's generally how but it was, works. The deer was fine. Yeah. That's kind of how it works around here. Like, but are we, I've very rarely seen a moose in my entire life. I've not seen a lot of them. Deer, I see them all the time. They're kind of all over the place. Um, the more comfortable they are with you, the better they, you know, they're the more nicer they are. But it's kind of cool. I, I like animals in general. I go shark diving in the summer. Have you gone shark diving? 
Oh uh, no, I haven't. I I've been close to the ocean, but I've never been in the ocean. I've touched the ocean water because I went to California to see my sister, and we and she's by the coast. So there you go. California is fun. I've been and to California so... once. Good times. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I went shark diving. If I go once in a while, you have to be scuba certified to do that. Like you have to have like the tanks and stuff. Um, a lot of people have misconceptions yeah. of them too, right? A lot of people think they're man eaters and stuff like that. Well, I have all my fingers and all they my toes. Know. What's up? They only do that because they think you're fish. Yeah, they don't know what you are anyway. They're they're fish themselves. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, you know, give them more credit than they probably need. They're definitely, you know, some of them are more dangerous than others. But for the most part, as long as you're smart and you treat them with respect. You're not going to have much of an issue. I think the other problem is that people forget yeah. that when we go into the ocean, that's their house. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's where they live. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Well, we're on the we're on the land. So if a shark came on the land, it would be a different story. I think people will be really running then. But for the most part, I mean, a lot of people forget that the ocean's where they live. We visit the ocean. You know what I mean? We can't just you know, walk to the bottom of the ocean and, you know, not have to deal with anything. And a lot of people think that, oh, they forget that sharks are just fish. <laughs> They're not mammals. And they really don't have a lot of mindset. They're kind of just no yeah. swim, eat, food. And that's pretty much about it. That's what they know. So, but what's weird is uh, back then in like the Stone Ages or probably a little bit uh, in Ford, like Ford in time, uh, they made like spears things that could actually like kill sharks. But yet, yet now we're in the future and we have stuff that, like, stuff that are barely even effective with sharks. Yet we can go all the way under the ocean to see what's there. Yeah, it's interesting. And you know what else is they have now? They have actually um now they have they're trying to use shark skin as um a way to keep your keep, to keep people safer because it's strong shark skin's like sandpaper it's not very comfortable um because when i went to go shark diving i fed a few of them and um they feel like sandpaper okay. interesting but there's a lot of that stuff oh. uh fun fact my mom caught a shark when she went to seattle seattle and, washington uh, uh, so yeah. Good times. Was, like near the, yeah, near the coast, she caught a shark, mm -hmm. but uh, it was it was like I would say like maybe a little bit bigger than this. Yeah. But, and they, but it was like on a boat, and she almost brought it in because she thought it was a fish, and she started to lift it up over the boat, and the person who was in charge was like, "Throw it back in the water! Throw it back in the water!" <laughs> it's like, "Why? It's a shark." <laughs> oh, uh, back in the water and cut the line, but, <laughs> but it's a it shark. was friendly. It didn't, it didn't try and bite or anything. But, yeah, they turn. They tend to not want to do that. They don't really like people. To be honest with you, they're not really fond of human meat. Um, they like seals and things of that nature, fish, things of the, like that. Unless it's like a tiger shark that kind of has like you know, the ability to eat whatever they can find, which I don't know what nourishment they get out of a license plate, but hey, I guess it, if it looks good, because <laughs> they're known for doing that. Um, <laughs> actually, they're the kind of the old, they call the, they call tiger sharks the um, garbage cans of the sea because they just kind of eat whatever they find versus actually kind of thinking, hey, maybe I shouldn't eat this or not. They don't care if it's in the water, they're going to eat it, whatever it is. Um, license plates. Hey, this taste what's up? Like, hey, this doesn't taste as good as I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe it, it depends on where the license plate's from, too. I don't know. I mean, usually tiger sharks tend to stay in the warmer water, so it's usually Florida anyway. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of the things you'll see license plates, they'll eat like tires, bottles, cans. Uh, a, a, I think I heard a hubcap, um, a bumper. I don't know why a bumper is even in the ocean, but 
Uh, actually, all the things I just mentioned, I don't know why any of them are in the ocean, to be honest. I don't know why one would have a, bump, a license plate in the car, but in the ocean, but I guess if it's there, why not, I suppose. Yeah. It's like they're eating everything except what they're supposed to eat. Yeah, well, that's if they can find fish. They eat those too. Or seals or what have you. Those are fun. So what's it like going to school? Like, currently, what's it like going to school for you? Like, do you get along with everyone at school? Or uh, do you tend yeah, not, to not... stick to your own little group? Or how does that work for you? I have a few different groups. I, I'm, I'm friends with as much people as I can be. But some people just, like, don't like to be social. Or they're just, like, kind of mean. But... Are you a social person? Like, do you like hanging out with people and talking to people? Or are you more like a, I'll talk to people if I know who they are kind of a deal? No, I'll talk, I'll talk to anyone, but. Well, proof of the point, you came here, yeah. so that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll talk to anyone as long as they will talk to me, but there's this kid named Tegan. He's literally the same Zodiac sign as me, but. Zodiac We're sign. completely different. Yeah, Zodiacs. we're completely different people. That's awesome. What do you know about the zodiacs? What zodiac sign are you? Um, cancer. Oh, you're my, you're my, my daughter's also a cancer. That's cool. I am an Aries. My wife is a Capricorn, and my son's a Scorpio. And that's a puppy. That's adorable. What puppy are you on the internet? Sorry, I got excited. I like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I don't know how many times I've had. I don't know how many times I've had people on the show all of a sudden a dog will pop up and I'll lose focus, look at the dog. Sorry. Yeah, awesome. Cool. What's the dog's name? Uh, Tucker. Tucker, that's what's a why great name? In, yeah, that's why in the beginning of my email, it has Tuck. He was my first dog. That's so awesome. So one over there is my uh, one over there is my mom's dog. Awesome. So you're like dog. He's I like the, dogs. Dogs are awesome. Yeah, the had, one over there, he's the puppy. This one's the older one. Yeah, they get along well? Uh, yeah, They after like the first year, they started playing, so. <laughs> For the first year after the older one got sick of the younger one's antics. <laughs> I get it. I love, we grew up with dogs. Dogs were awesome. We had all kinds of dogs. We had a, a Dalmatian, which was an interesting dog. A Hus the Husky was my favorite. Husky was cool. Yeah, huskies are huskies are proactive and they're really really strong and very energetic. Very energetic and very vocal. A husky is now an Alaskan Malamute. My uncle had an Alaskan Malamute. Those are amazing too, and they kind of look like a giant version of a husky. Only they don't make any noise. Um, very interesting dog though. It was there was a yeah. That's a big dog too. The Alaskan Malamute. Uh, my uncle is slightly taller than I am, and the dog on his hind legs could put his paws on my uncle's shoulders. Um, yeah. So it was a big dog, but it was a it was a good dog though. He you know got along with everyone and kind of would be the dog to show everyone where everything is in the house versus stop anyone from breaking in. <laughs> Someone <laughs> broke in, he'd probably show the show the robbers where everything is and have the have the robber Here's give him belly rubs. What's yeah. up? here's the money here's the uh here's the safe yeah yep. the things out. yeah as long as long as uh, as long as the robber gives them a belly rub they're fine <laughs> yeah dogs are great i also had horse uh, was raised around horses can you ride a horse uh no but my uh one of my friends that are a uh, girl uh she rides horses she lives yep. in my uh uh, uh, town too. So it's cool. That's good. Do you, now, when so you have you you said before how you kind of you're nice to people and stuff like that at school. Like, is there like a a small group of you guys who hang out together, or are do you kind of you guys are like over here and leave everyone else alone? And how does that work for you? Like, how do you who do you well, like who are the uh, people you associate with basically? Well, my I have like three different three different groups that I hang out with during 
with during the day. Oh, well, that's good. And I have like I have like one that hangs out with me all day, but so I have like one that I go to during lunch, but then I have the ones I have during like the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So like my friend Skylar, he's just like my friend that hangs out with me all day, and mm -hmm. then. I go I go over to Skylar and Bradley, which is like his friends are there. So we're kind of like a trio. And then I go over to my friend uh Brennan and Steven and and we hang out and then I go over to my basically like my girlfriend's group mm -hmm. which we hang out with all of her friends at lunch. You get along with all your girlfriend's friends? Oh yeah, I've known him for a long time. That's good. So. That's good. How long now? The friends that you are friends with, are these people you always went to school with, or are these people you just kind of met over the years? Well, uh, Skylar, I've known for since elementary, I think, in like fourth, third, or fourth grade. Cool. And then, cool. and then I met uh, Christina in elementary. Which is part of my girlfriend's uh group, and then everyone. Oh, and Christina is my girlfriend's cousin, apparently. But apparently, and then everyone <laughs> kind of joined on. That's cool. And you get along with all of them. Oh uh, yeah, that's Typically, good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Nothing's wrong with that. It's always good to get along versus not, especially when your girlfriends and stuff like that um it's always good to you know have good morals and good value with that you know we're we're big components with friendships and stuff like that and real friends versus the ones who kind of aren't so nice because we all deal with that too correct <laughs> i'm sure yeah. yep i'll be right back you have the yeah. friends that are your real friends that's right i'll be right back i uh, keep talking i'm just gonna check on one thing real quick uh, on this. And then you yeah. got like the friends that are like, um, uh, they're like, uh, not that nice in school, but they're like the nicest out of school. But <clears throat> Jackson, what are you even chewing on? Just chewing on a little bum. And then I got this kid that's not very nice. His name is Tegan, but um, oh no, there's just a dog. Dog. Stop. Yeah, I'm only gonna lock the door and turn the light off. Yeah. Anyways. Hey, come here. No. But yeah, so there's like Tegan that he's just like only sticks with like one group of friends, but uh, a bridge. That's done. All right. I am back. Sorry about that. I made brownies, so I had to take them out of the oven. My bad. <laughs> Good times. Um, you you're there still. I started talking to like the people, but then all of a sudden, yeah, you know, I was like showing him what the dog was chewing on, but What's... and then I and then all of a sudden we heard a dog like yelp, like he's like it he was dying or something. But I checked outside, and it's just like a dog. I don't know, but it's like a dog screaming. So I locked outside. I don't uh, turn off the light because it could. Yeah, it could have been like a coyote or something. Yeah, coyotes like are something. interesting too. <laughs> yeah. Have you encountered a lot of coyotes where you are? Probably, huh? Um, uh, not, not a lot. I've count. Uh, maybe in my whole life, I've encountered maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. No, not very much. That's cool. Well, I haven't encountered, I've only encountered maybe one, but I didn't even, it wasn't, I barely even saw it and it was running 
completely away from me, chasing like a squirrel or something. It sounds about but right. But there's been, yeah, there's been like close calls, like something. There's coyotes that are literally not even a thousand feet away, like that were down the road. Mm. And I was told to get up to the house during the winter too. Yeah, smart. Um, I remember I worked for a movie theater at one point. And uh, I had just moved to an area that was very wooded area. Actually, it's in the middle of a mountain area. And I used to have to cut through this big wooded area. And I just got this little itty bitty flashlight to get home because they shut the street lights off to get home. And I was walking home one day and I flashed my flashlight. I saw these lights look like eyes across the way from me. And when I put the little flashlight across the way to see what the light, what the eyes were, I thought they were like deer or something. There was six coyotes across the street from me. Um, and I'm like, okay, oh that's fun. I said, how about this? You guys stay over there. I'll be over here. You know, we'll be good. And I just continued on my merry way and let them do their thing. And I knocked on wood. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. And, uh, that was one of my early encounters. Actually, I used to call my walks home my walk through Animal Kingdom because uh, I'd encounter almost everything in there. Um, deer, um, fisher cats, which are the most obnoxious things ever. Not so much that they're mean. They just make the worst noises ever. If you ever ha- encountered a fisher cat, they're annoying. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so and then coyotes. Wait. California encountered one and it was like it was just screaming at me i'm like wait what 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 do i do is it gonna like attack me or something yeah right so i just kept backing away and it kept following me so i just so i just kept walking and it kept following me some animals but, i laugh at if it ever was to hiss at me or whatever or whatever the end depends on what the animal is some animals i just laugh at um but for the most part i don't really get a lot of animals that give me a hard time anyway mostly cats for some reason cats and i don't get along well um, it's just not that I don't get along well with cats, but I'm not overly fond of cats, and they probably know that. Um, I give every animal a chance at least, but out of any animal I've ever encountered, I found cats to be the most um untrustworthy ones. Um, if if something does something that doesn't make any sense to me, I have a tendency not to trust it. And cats have um done things that make no rational sense to me so i tend to prefer not to deal with cats um dogs and everything else no problem what, sharks what, i'll play with sharks before i'll hang out with a with a cat so there you go <laughs> there's worse things in life well i don't get is a cat a cat could be like 10 20 pounds and it can jump over seven feet yeah cats with, are very agile feet, like they- yeah the muscles in their legs. My dog. It's the muscles in the legs. And That's I'm... what that is. And then they just spring back. Mm-hmm. Oh. This dog we called Baby Deer because hey. he was just because he was just a little you know when he was younger. He was just <laughs> he was just like sitting there and jumping around. <laughs> oh, you stop that. He doesn't like to be held. He's camera shy. Yeah. <laughs> He's adorable. Uh, he, my my dog was stealing the dog's bone, so he got mad. Yeah, that's and generally how it gave works. The other one. <clears throat> yeah, dogs are fun like that. But um, I also he, had he snakes. He would just hop around, around the too. yard. The the dog. Snakes. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I used he to would just hop around like a baby. Up. Yeah, I have snakes too. I had a uh-huh. snake. I, I had two, and you know what the thing about snakes are? They have they have long lives. Unfortunately, other animals don't have the lifespan that you know reptiles do. So snakes, reptiles in general, tend to live longer than say, sadly, dogs, cats, gerbils. Well, then again, to be honest, I look at those things as considering I had always had snakes. I see those things as snake food anyway, <laughs> but. You know, they're still adorable and stuff, but I, I prefer snakes over all the other things. They're actually one of the best and the most underrated pets out there. Um, yeah. You know, they have many, many good uses. Like if you take snake skin and you scatter it around your yard, for example, sometimes animals like to get in your trash and stuff like that. I don't know if that's a thing you have to deal with, 
Um, but at a far away, animals like to get involved with like trash and things of that nature. And if you get some snake skin, you just scatter it around your yard. They won't even go near your trash cans. They also won't even go into your yard. And that's not just the vermin. That's like any animal. If they know that there's a snake in nearby, they won't even go near that area. So that's a fun little nature fun fact that you may not know. And uh, yeah, it's fun stuff. Do you like snakes? Probably not. Uh, I mean, I don't mind them if, as long as they're like in the cage. In the cage. But they can't get me. So you, so you don't want to hold the snake. In other words, you don't like to hang out with them. I mean, I don't like snake as long as they don't bite. Oh yeah, you know, that that's I how they're raised. Hold, I can hold a big snake. I, I can hold a big snake like the ones that don't bite. I can hold, I can hold one of those. Mm-hmm. No problem, as long as they're not heavy. Mm-hmm. But like ones that are like try and bite you, I I can never. Yeah, and I I've been fortunate. Like yeah, then they can be nasty right behind the head if that ever happens to those people. Um, I've had two great snakes in my lifetime. I had one when I got when I was five. Um, after I won my first karate tournaments, we um, I got a snake. I named her Damien. I didn't know that there was a such thing as a boy and a girl snake either. I was only five. <laughs> so I named my snake Damien, and she was a great snake. But the thing about Damien, she wasn't as personable as um, – another snake that who was my favorite but damien the thing that made her interesting one she was my bigger of the two snakes she was our colombian red tail boa and she was a female females generally get bigger than the males um but damien was cool in the sense that she would be chill she would just hang out with you but the only like thing that made her like different was she would had this thing about sticking her head in your armpit and just like falling asleep and just hanging out there she was content with just doing that. But the other cool thing about her is she could pretty much eat pretty much anything you threw in there uh, with her. It was the other thing because she was a big snake. When she died, by the way, I got her, like I said, when I was five. And she died right after I got signed to my first wrestling contract, a little bit after that. So 21. No, I guess got, not 21. I was older than that. I was 21 when I won my first title. And that's when I, that's when my date, my snake finally died. And I was sad. <laughs> Damien. And when she died, she was eight feet long and 90 pounds when she died. Good times. 90 pounds? Yeah, she was eight feet long and 90 pounds when she finally died. And I was 21 when she died. I got her when that's I was five. Pounds lighter than and she was like this big. She was wow. like a worm size when I first got her. And then a friend of mine was getting rid of his. Now this is where it's funny. A friend of mine was getting rid of his snake around the time Damien died. And he knew I felt bad. So he's like, hey, I got to move and I can't bring my snake with me. I, I got this snake and, you know, he's a year older than me, actually, the snake. And technically, yeah, the snake was a year older than I was. So. When I was 21, the snake it actually was 21 was 22 years old. The snake because the snake was older than me, but he was a red. He was a ball python. His name was Cole after from the Sixth Sense. You know the Sixth Sense. You ever see that movie? Well, I named him Cole because that was one of my favorite. Oh uh, yeah, I seen. So Cole was actually the snake that had personality. He was awesome. <laughs> Uh, Cole was a people snake. He liked to hang out with people. Um, he liked to, he enjoyed watching wrestling and watching television. Yep. He watched wrestling and television. He liked music. He liked to be held by people and he knew how to give snake kisses, which was the most ridiculous thing ever. But yeah, he gave snake kisses because he liked people and it's all about how you raise them. And a snake kiss isn't what you think, like not what the dog does. Like a dog licks your face or whatever. That's a, that's what a dog does. A snake sticks its tongue out. It's not actually kissing you. It's tasting the air and tasting what you are. Uh, but that's not how Dame, but Cole, what he would do is he would, you know, take his little lips and he'd go, you know, give you a little peck here and a little peck there. And, you know, wherever he was, he would just give you a little peck like he was kissing it and stuff like that. He was a cool snake. And then he sadly died because he was older than I was. So, um, 
you know, he was cool snake though. And he was not as big. He was only about six feet when he died. Six feet and maybe what 30 pounds. He was not very big. He was a male snake. Males aren't very big anyway. But he was cool. He definitely had a personality. He loved watching like when wrestling was on, he'd just sit there at the TV and just watch the wrestling like that. He was he was a character. And then and then he knew when people were out there because if because people would come over and watch TV and stuff and watch movies. So when other people were there, he would like go right to the cage in the tank. He knew he was gonna come out and hang out with everybody. So that's what he would do. Unless he ate. And that was a different story. So now he's nice to people. I didn't say he was nice to everything else. Um, so <laughs> my friend one time, my female, my former best friend, she was a well, not my former, she was a one of my best friends was a female, and she didn't get to she never seen him eat. And unfortunately, she knew Cole. She loved Cole. Cole was, you know, a lovable snake. Uh, except for when it came to his him eating, because then he wasn't so nice uh to his food. Uh but um yeah, have you ever seen a snake eat? Uh yeah. Okay. I have so you, on okay. videos and stuff. But not in person. I've seen a snake eat a car. So you've seen a snake eat a car? You yeah, it was like the biggest snake in the world or something. But oh. it ate it, like a uh a slug bug. Interesting. I think. Interesting. I don't know what good that would do, but anyway, random. <laughs> Can't get nothing out of a boat or a car. Anyway, anyway, that was a fun stuff. So, now, do you get along with? Now, you, I was talking to you before I went and took the brownies out of the oven. You were telling me about. You were telling us about how you were um, how you get along with everyone in school and stuff like that. Do you guys, you ever encounter people not so nice at school, like bullies and stuff like that, or no? I guess, like, my, uh, the, you know the kid Tegan I was talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's, he, uh, when I was in sixth grade, if I was walking too slow, he would push me in the room I was going to. Hmm. He would just kind of, like, just, like, bump me or, like, just, like, kind of slightly push me into to the room. But then once I got to the doorway... One time he just freaking chucked me into the room and I almost punched him, but it didn't because I knew I would have gotten in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's good self-control. Good for you. So how, how do you get along with everybody online? Cause I, I know some, of, I've some, I've seen some of it. I don't, you have more patience than I do. I give you a lot of credit there. You are a lot nicer than I am. I, I don't have that patience, which is why I, I feel bad, but, um, but how how is that for you now? Because I know you're a social media guy because you're all over the Instagram. You're actually more busier than I am. I, I'm barely lucky to get on at all. You are the whiz when it comes to that stuff. I see you on there and you rank them all in. Um, for you, what is the social media do for you? Like, what do you like about the Instagram type of thing? Like, do you like meeting new people? Um, or is it you know part of what you want to do in life? Like, what 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 about the social media do you enjoy? I like talking. I like talking to people, and I like knowing there's more people to talk to than just one. And mm -hmm. like once, like maybe every month, or at least like every two weeks, I'll get at least one or like one to ten more new people. Mm -hmm. I like seeing my videos. Mm -hmm. and, Sometimes one and uh, yeah. Now, when you make the now, you got some very interesting videos. You're again, you're incredible. You've done some some cool stuff, um, which is why I, I've all, I've told a lot of people that I think you have a lot of potential, and I think there's a lot of things I could see you getting involved with. Um, I don't even know if you even know how talented you are, <laughs> but um, in the fact that you also have an instant likability factor, which is not something someone can learn. Uh, that's good. That's feedback. That's yeah, weird. What's that? And one in one year, or like close to a year, or maybe a little bit less, like in at least six to twelve months, I've got on TikTok. I got more and more followers each year, and sometimes I'd get banned for something stupid, <laughs> so I'd have to restart my TikTok account. 
<laughs> and then eventually, my highest one, I got 800 uh, followers. And then and I just went from a different platform because I wasn't getting very many followers. And I was getting 800 followers a year. And some people get like a thousand followers in like a couple months or mm-hmm. within a year. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to try a different platform. So I went to Instagram mm-hmm. and started on here. And then I started blowing up. So it's just the different platforms that matter. But Do you like Instagram better than TikTok? Or do you like TikTok better than Instagram? Um, I mean, I like the, like, in mean, some videos, I don't really mind too much, but on here, you can scroll a lot faster than you can TikTok. You have to wait for it to click on to the next video. Mm-hmm. But this one, you can just keep scrolling past the video you don't want to see. Yeah. But I tried I mean, TikTok pretty- last year, and I was not good at it. I didn't understand how it worked. So you're already smarter than me. I couldn't work out TikTok. I couldn't understand anything about it, so... You're better than I am with well, that. <laughs> there was a lot of interesting people. The people that I am not overly fond of and the people who I usually d- usually get into it, arguments with, I, I decided it was probably better for me to leave TikTok and just kind of continue being on Instagram once in a while when I have time to do so. Have you ever tried YouTube, though? I'm surprised you haven't done YouTube. Or have you done YouTube? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. I am doing YouTube right now. Oh yeah. But it's not I'm mainly doing it for my friends. Yeah, I've got I've think I got like thirty six followers and I've been doing it for well, over maybe, a year. Maybe we can fix that too, since <laughs> I am the original one of the original YouTubers. So <laughs> there you go. Um yeah, YouTube is uh interesting animal altogether. That's good stuff. You like to, but you're, you like to perform though. I can see that, that in you, right? You like to do stuff. You like to have something to do, right? Versus just sitting there and talking, right? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I, now, I, I, I talk a lot, but I also like do stuff like I do pull ups. I do just like stuff. Yeah. While we're talking. Sure. You like to be active, right? I, I, yeah. I don't I mind talking to people and just like sitting there. Like right now, in other like words, like this, you don't mind once yeah. in a while. Right. I get you. But you like to be active, though, considering you're about you said earlier, you're an outdoor kind of a person to be an outdoor person. You kind of want to be outside and you're an active person. Someone who tends to want to hang yeah. out in the house all day is someone who tends, tends to not be as active. Um, I don't know how they do that. I, I'm not one of those people. I, I <laughs> um, you know, those challenges where someone shows everything they do in like one day, like that, you know, a day in the life of or whatever. I'm sure you've seen those, right? Like the daily routine. Uh, daily videos. Routine. Yeah, yeah, I can't do those because mine would be really long and people would get really bored. <laughs> and people would probably be concerned because they'll realize that I've already done like, 700 things and it's only like nine o'clock in the morning and i haven't and i still have like 12 more hours to do something else and then i'll remember to eat <laughs> tend to be how it works i get busy and i stay busy so i get it yeah, what's up mine would probably be pretty boring like on a daily basis. mine would probably be pretty boring because i don't really do very much things because i've already done all of them mm-hmm. but well, what do you, well, you mean, said? What are your chores though? Like you have chores, right? Because you're in the country, you must have chores, right? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I have two. My mom does probably everything else. She's not really good at anything, like chores wise. But I do the dishes and the laundry. Good for you. Good for you. I, mean, I just put the dishes in the dishwasher and then I take them out and put them away. That's good. Sometimes we have a lot of dishes to put away, so. I bet. Do you know how to cook? Are you able to cook for yourself? Uh, yeah. There you go. See, that's that street smart thing we were talking about earlier. <laughs> yeah, apparently Where's... I'm a pretty good. Uh, yeah. yeah. What do you I like cook... to cook? What do I like to cook? Um, I mean, I started off with uh breakfast stuff, and I, and that's like my specialty. Well, mm-hmm. for now, but might as well. 
That's um, awesome, man. I, I make, I can make smoothies. Like I kind of just look up recipes on my phone, but uh, I've got to where I don't need to really look at the recipes if I, or like the uh, numbers. I mm -hmm. if I know like basically how much they're adding. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, if it's like a one fourth of milk, I I'll, I'll grab like a measuring cup, mm -hmm. and I'll and I'll get one fourth. But with and then if <clears throat> like they just grab like a pinch of salt or something in like one one eighth teaspoon or something i'll just grab a pinch of salt that's good see uh, put it in there or like a few shakes of him in it or that's him in him. But, yeah gotcha yeah, that's good but i've done students, i've done like dinner stuff i've done that's awesome uh, and how old are you uh drake <clears throat> 12 12 all right cool now, what I often find interesting is how many 12-year-olds I talk to who can do like 12 arm bars and 1,600 other things, but they don't know how to fry an egg um, or make their bed <clears throat> or do their laundry. But yet they can do 700 backflips and they can name five different ways to do something, but yet they can't fry an egg or do something that will, you know, they need to like the necessary yeah. things you need in life. Um, so you're already a leg well, up can... on that. Yeah, well, I when I was younger, I my learned how to do like uh, flips on a trampoline when I was really young. So now I can do quite a few flips. There you go. But and then I started getting into like cooking and stuff like essentials. But I mm -hmm. did when I was bored. I would, I have I still have my trampoline, but it's kind of over the hill, so we have to bring it back up. But um, I would do like. I now I can do like four backflips in a row if mm -hmm. it's like a big trampoline. Yeah. But I could do a side flip, uh, like a quarter turn or something like that. And I can do a gainer. Cool. cool. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's weird. I've, what I, so I learned things and I do them That's when I was thing. younger. So that's an awesome thing, right there. Are you self taught in a lot of the things too? Oh, uh, yeah. I started off with. With a front flip, and then I am, <clears throat> and then my um, sister taught me a back flip, mm -hmm. and then I kind of just learned from there. There you go. Then I, I learned how that. to do side flip, and then I learned how to do two back flips in a row. Now, when you talk about music, I know you say you like to sing. Have you ever tried writing your own songs, or do you like to sing other people's songs? Do you ever write? Yeah. I, you okay? You gonna live? Yes, I did. You okay? I did write one. Oh, good. I was yeah, worried I was about so... you. You looked like you were choking on soda. Wrong. You were drowning? You're okay? Yeah. You're going to live? We got to send the submarine yeah, cases yeah. to come get you? All right, good. No highlights through the through the Zoom. I don't think it works that way. Yeah. All right, good. You're alive. Okay, just making sure. He's going to live, folks. He's not dead. He's okay. Good. Anyway, go back to what you were saying. I'm sorry. Um, what was I talking about again? <laughs> what was I talking about again? I was ask I was asking you. Um, oh no, I don't remember what I was what I was asking you now. See what happens? I was worried about you choking, and now I was worried about you drowning, and now I forgot what I was going to ask you. See that? Uh, oh, I was asking you about writing. You, I asked you if you ever wrote a song, and you oh, said yeah. you did. I, I did. Yeah, it's um. My friend helped me do like the, like the starting part of it, but then I just finished it. Mm -hmm. It's do called you like to um, write? desperation. Desperation. Do you like yeah. writing or no? And I mean, I sing the beginning lyrics of my own songs like a lot. Yeah. I sing really all the time, but mainly in my head. <laughs> but, I, my head. but I can sing. But people can like give me lyrics, and I can just like sing a, like a beginning verse, or like just like the start of a song. That's cool. Off like a so. That sounds like the Disney Challenge that was a thing for a while back there. Did you do the Disney Challenge back when it was a thing? Like you had to go the whole day. Every time someone said something, you you had to burst out in a song. That was a <clears throat> challenge way back. 
I don't remember how long ago, like early days of TikTok or whatever. So like the challenge was um, someone would be talking and then all of a sudden, like in a Disney movie, someone would say something where like everyone would have to stop what they're doing. Everyone has to sing this so- elaborate song in the middle of the thing about whatever it is. You guys, you didn't do that challenge? No, I've seen him for that, but my uh, friend, uh, um, no, my cousin, uh, he did that, and uh, his he lost his voice by the end of the day because yeah. he was singing, uh, let it go for like the whole day because let his uh, because his dad kept playing it, so he would keep singing it. That's brutal. That's brutal. That song too. That's a tough one. Actually, a fun breathing exercise. Whenever I'm walking around, I'll sing. Uh, because it helps with your breathing and your and your endurance and stuff like that. So if I'm walking, I go for a walk every day, at least a few. But when I'm walking around, I when I, I will sing I because it's good for your lungs and it's good for your and and if you can sing and, and walk at the same time, you, it'll help you build your endurance and also you help you with your breathing. Um, I found that out a long time ago, so I've been using that technique for a long time. Because what happens is, you know how when you walk, you go up and down hills and stuff like that? Now, that alone could, you know, get someone out of breath or whatever. But imagine trying to go up and down hills while you're trying to sing various songs on a playlist. Then it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. But when you can do that and you have that same breathing yeah, technique, I- you have control of that, you're you're actually stellar with that. Yeah, I've, I've, I've figured that out because... Uh, when I start singing all the time, um, I just realized you switched cups. You ran out of one drink and you went to a different mug. Oh, me? I have two cups. Yeah. Water I... and tea. You can't see my cups. Though. Oh, yeah, you can see a little bit. Yeah. This is my it um, tea cup. I always have two things. Water in one cup, tea in the other. Anyways, That's just me. That's as hardcore as it gets. I'd sing... I'd sing all the time, and then I, I uh, was like doing uh, breath holding contests on my <laughs> social media, app. Mm-hmm. and then um, I would like beat them twice or three times in a row. I'm like, wow, I I have a really good breath span, and like only <laughs> uh millionaires could can hold your breath this long and type blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, so I did it like three times in a row. I'm like, wow! I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. <laughs> nice. Now, going back to the social media thing, because I see you're a very busy person on there. What is your favorite parts of that, and what is your least favorite parts of that? Of social media. I'm yeah, sure. like, what do you love, and what do you not like as much? Oh, I love talking to people all the time, and I love making people happy. And what I hate is just like creeps and perverted people. Yeah, there's a lot of those, unfortunately, as I've seen. <laughs> and again, you're you're much calmer than I would be. <laughs> I'm not as nice as you are when it comes to that stuff. So good for you. Have a good self-control. Out of curiosity, what happened? Yeah. What like what is your like when do you like um know when to ask for it? Like, do you know when to ask for help if things get out of cra- like someone gets really crazy or whatever else? What do you do for that? Like, have you ever had encountered someone who was really, really bad that you just like this guy's too much or this person yeah. is too much? If like I removed him from my live and they kept getting on my live, then I would just block them. Mm-hmm. But if they kept unblocking themselves, then automatically i would know they're a hacker because um because obviously you can't unblock yourself but uh, on when i remove people from lives they just re uh, some of them they've just restarted their account and they're able to get back on so i've done that but then i just uh uh banned some of them or the people that would keep getting back on i'm like fine you really want to do that then i banned them yeah that's craziness I, I've seen out. this kid go through all kinds of things. He's much nicer than I am. I don't know how you do it. I would sit there and roast people all day. <laughs> no one would go on my lives, though, because I would zoo on everybody. Huh? What'd you say? Um, I, I said if I wanted to. 
I really could because I've I done it could. before. I know you could, and I feel I, bad because I see it, and I feel bad because you're actually a really good kid, and I can see that. Nice young man, I should say. And I can see you're also being genuine. You like to have fun, and I also think that you have a lot of potential, and I think it's sad when people you know, talk to you the way they do and they treat you the way you do. And I think that's sad because you're, you know, a really nice young man. And I think you have a lot of good things you do. And I think you have a lot of good things going for you. And I think you're going to be an inspiration to a lot of people. Unfortunately, you got to deal with, you know, scumbags as I call them. (laughs) Um, And unfortunately I can't uh, police everybody, I guess. Uh, So um, I give you a lot of credit for what you deal with, you know, just wanted to tell you I that. Too. What happened? I have to plug my phone in. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's is, uh, is that is that three percent? So brutal. that was bad. That's brutal. Yeah, I got that. It's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I get it. Um oh a ran- this is a random question just because we ask people who come on the show. Do you do you, what do you watch on television if you watch television? Like just TV, normal TV. Yeah, like on TV. What are the things you like, like to watch channel? on television? Yeah, like what? What do you like to watch on television? I'd say like the Looney Tunes or like Me TV. You like it's Looney like Tunes? All the Looney. Yeah. All right. Like the cartoons or like, or like the older shows where it's like like the Andy Griffin show and the and Mash. No kidding. You like Andy Griffith. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I used to grow up watching a lot of those shows. How about uh, Brady Bunch? You watch the Brady Bunch? Oh, yeah. It's it's, um, it's <laughs> on, like, um, I see it once in a while. Yeah. Well, not once in a while. I see it, like, once every week. So now you watch the, a lot of the older shows. you not like the newer shows? Uh, I don't. Well, I don't mind. I don't mind the newer shows, but I I just don't like the remixes of shows. Yeah, like they it, made like Looney Tunes new because yeah. like the other inappropriate or right. something. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. They were too risque. But People. If they I updated get... their oh, stuff, oh, so they can some stuff wasn't allowed. Mm-hmm. That's true. It is sad. They did the same thing with Tom and Jerry and a lot of Disney stuff, too. So, because they made like what happened? What did you say? They made like a 2D, they made like a like a 2D, 3D character into like into a Disney. Uh, they made like a cartoon character, like mm-hmm. uh, uh, Tom and Jerry into a real into the real world. So, that must have been really hard. Because yeah. you have to combine, you have to combine something that's real with something that they well, made. Well, that was like Space Jam. Remember that Space Jam? They did that yeah. with Michael Jordan. You got to hang around Bugs Bunny yeah. and Elmer Fudd. Random. I'm sure <laughs> they actually were able to pull that off. Yeah, it's technology. It's amazing how they can do those things. I went to film school, but I went. I I prefer making independent films and. Um, writing those things and things like that that's something that i do and i also help cast a lot of things and things of that nature um i also work yeah. with some people i don't know if you ever heard adam sandler you ever hear adam sandler he's just a guy he just lives up not not far away from yeah. you've heard Adam? Sandler? yeah he's a good guy um i did a few of when i was going to film school i did a few um I did a few things for him as like an intern type of thing. And then I just started helping them out whenever they came to the area. And now I, I help a lot of the local places look for talents and things of that nature. And also location scouting. I must look, I do a lot of that too. A lot of, I'm very busy. I do a lot, but you know, it's good to stay busy. Uh, what do you like for movies and stuff What's like that? that? What's up? What I like for movies? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like cartoon movies, but I also like um, like blood and gore. So. You like cartoon movies? Like, you love blood and gore. 
So you you like horror movies then? Yeah, I like horror movies, but I also like uh war movies. And I also like just comedy movies. And also so like, just like Sounds like you like a lot of movies. Yeah. I gotcha. Cool. Just a lot of gotcha. Cool. <laughs> um, I work for a horror convention, so I have had the pleasure of working and meeting a lot of people in the horror movie world. Um, I like horror movies. I like pretty much everything, at least once. Um, but yeah, I like pretty much every movie except for like, I'm trying to think of anything I really don't like. I, I, I'm not overly fond of remakes. I, I, I like kind of, I prefer like newer stuff. I don't like lately seeing the same seven movies over and over again. I'm kind of superhero like- out. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Unless they make, make like a, like a terrible, like not, not that good of a movie into like a really good movie. That's like has sequels and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of movies that have sequels too, and that gets redundant too. Like, you know, Friday the 13th part 90 90,000 90, you know what I mean things of that nature they finally, they finally just ended the Halloween series yeah knock on wood until they do it again how did you like the ending did you watch it yeah I watched the last movie did you like it that they made yeah but the uh, Michael Myers he's really old yeah he was Senior citizen Michael Myers. <laughs> Michael Myers from the uh from the home. <laughs> hey, does he get discount? Yeah, senior citizen discount. That's right. Senior discount on the on the on the possum, and if they give him a hard time, he has no problem just taking it either. I, I don't think anybody's <laughs> gonna say no. You know what I, I often wonder a lot of people, you know, Friday the thirteenth, right? What does he do the other yep. 368 days of the year? Just hang around the woods, Jason Voorhees? Or Michael Myers? Yeah, what? So Michael Myers only Michael Myers only hangs out on Halloween, right? So what does he do the other 368 days a year? Just kind of hangs out in the One woods day. or in the sewer? Or... I mean, how do you hide? You're Michael Myers. <laughs> Because I'm friends with some Michael people who played Michael Myers. A lot of them are huge. In fact, if I want to find out how big, I, how tall I am, and how short I am, they're quick to remind me. <laughs> Guys like Tyler Maine, who was Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, did you see Rob Zombie's version of Halloween? Um, uh, I think I've seen like, like clips of it on YouTube because they played that for like yeah. a bit. He was also Sabretooth in the X-Men movies, too, Tyler Maine. He also be a wrestler back in the day, too, obviously. But yeah. I like horror movies. What's your favorite horror movie? Uh, I'd have to say It. It's a classic. Which one? Both. Both. They're both All right. pretty good. Thanks. I like, I like the new one, too. But the, old, the older one, it just kind of reminds me of, like... Of just like the creepy, it's just like the creepier vibe. Same thing with same thing with like Five Nights at Freddy's. Do you know that? I do. I do know Five Nights at Freddy's. I... And like it went from really scary, like like one through four or one through three, mm-hmm. those games, to now, to now it's like um, they just they just freaking made him like anime basically. Oh. And yeah. they went from really scary to what FNAF people wanted to now what the only reason why they're there is because it has something to do with FNAF. Oh. And I think it's like with like uh, privacy and stuff or like I don't know. They just completely took the fun out of it. But yeah. it's still kind of make it very scary. But I, I got you. used to the jump scare and like Second time or third time I played the game. Yeah, do you play games too? What do you play game? What games do you play? Uh, well, when I was younger, I would play FNAF games. When I barely even, when I barely even knew uh, about FNAF, but I still like the scariness of it. 
but but when I got older, I started playing driving and shooting games, and then now, like within the last three or four years, I play COD, uh, one and two. Mm-hmm. And I play GTA mm-hmm. Five. Fancy play GTA stuff. Five. Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite, of course, Ball everybody plays. Yeah. And then I play with Fort. Hmm. What about checkers? You play checkers? Oh uh, yeah, I play checkers, chess. And I have the newer games, obviously. Cool, but, cool. Um, I learned to play chess from my dad, but I've always known how to play checkers. Chess is good too. I like to actually. A lot of people refer to uh, combat sports as human chess. The art of kind of figure out someone else's moves and how to beat that person. That's what a lot of us refer to combat sports as human chess. I play human chess. I love human chess. It's fun. Um, checkers. I like checkers when I want to relax. Pool. Uh, how many? Jeez. Huh? What you say? How many famous people have you been out with? <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's see. How many famous people have I hung around with? Um, let's see. I lose track after a while. Like, who who do you figure is famous? Like, I know Robert England. You know Robert England? He's Freddy Krueger. You know him? Uh, kind of. Like, just... Friday like, the 13th? So, do people you want to have, like... People that have, like... Uh, like, a, like, a thousand people... At, like at least a thousand so, people know. So you want so you want me to tell you who the actors' names are? Or you want me to tell them who they played? Because some people don't know who people are when I tell them their names. Uh probably just who they play. Okay, so I know Freddy Krueger, both of them. I know pretty much every single Jason there is. I know a bunch of the Michael Myers. I just hung out with The Punisher from the movie The Punisher 2004. I know Elijah Wood very well, who was Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Um, Everyone from The Walking Dead. Tim Curry. Meatloaf. Danielle Harris. Oh, sorry. Jamie, she was in, uh, she was Jamie, uh, she was the sheriff's daughter in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Pretty much everyone from Rob Zombie's Halloween. (laughs) Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. That's that's a band. Um, meat, I said Meatloaf. Elvira. Pee Wee Herman, before he died. Um, oh, I know Pee Wee. Countless Pee-wee. wrestlers. Um, from much every wrestler there is, probably. Um, who else? I'm trying to think of the top of my head. William Shatner, who was, um, he was on Star Trek and a bunch of those. Um, Seth Green from Robot Chicken and and you know Family Guy and all that. Seth MacFarlane, who also works on Family Guy, um, very good friend of mine. Jackson Robert Scott from who was Georgie and It, you know It. I know a bunch of the guys oh. from It. Actually, I helped cast the movie It, so that's how I know a lot of those. The new movie It, I know all of them. I cast all yeah. of them. Um, who else? Uh, so you like, so you like Trina said that was my favorite movie. What's up? Yeah, that's why I so said that. Liked... What's up? So that's when you liked. That's why you liked the when I said it was my favorite movie. I, well, it. yeah, I I caught it. Yeah, because no. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad you liked the casting. Thanks. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, let's see. Stan Lee, I don't know if you ever heard of him. He did he did a lot of he was pretty much the person in charge of Marvel. Robert Ryan Reynolds, Adam West and Burt Ward, the original Batman and Robin. Um Sean, oh um Sam Wise or Rudy from or or the pretty much everybody from the Goonies. Um just this year, let's see. Uh, Clint Howard, who was in uh, The Grinch, you know, the Grinch movie that just happened. I know him from that. And also from, uh, he was in The Ice Cream Man, things like that. Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone. His dad, John Hurd. Um, the Shining Twins, the original ones. All of them. 
Um, Ernie, all the Ghostbusters, some of the new Ghostbusters, um, and the original Andy from Charles Play, huh? You've made over thirty people. Probably more than that. Have you ever looked at my page? <laughs> the pictures I have; those are real pictures. Those are real people. <laughs> Just like, like all the bands and like the names I've named. 31 people you've just 31 bands or things that you've named but you've probably named over 60 people already yeah but see the thing about it is i always treat everyone the same respect so you say famous i treat everyone the same way they're fans of mine they like me so there you go um (laughs) You know, Michael, you know, I don't know if you ever, I forgot about Michael Fishman. Can't forget about him. He was my first guest on this podcast. Uh, he was DJ Connor on the Connors. You ever watch Roseanne? You ever watch the show Roseanne? Uh, or the Connors on uh, TV? Yeah. yeah, I had Michael Fishman, who was my first guest on the on this podcast. Uh, so that's fun stuff, too. Uh, really? Yep. And a bunch of other people. But then, I mean, that's me. CM Punk, my a long time good friend. Dane Cook, I grew up with Dane Cook. He's a comedian. Um, Dennis that's Leary. Everyone just huh? I love Dane Cook. Dane Cook's a good role. Uh, just everyone. What's up? Everyone just really likes your character. I don't know. I'm just me. I, I always treat people with the same, the golden rule. I treat others the way they want to be treated. The way I want to be treated. I treat everyone with the same amount of respect. I don't, I don't, um, you know, whatever. I also believe in giving people chances and I also, you know, live the F4L way. See the F4L thing? <laughs> the F4L headquarters podcast and all that stuff. And of course I got the YouTube show. So a lot of people I meet through that too. And look at all that. And I know a lot of people like yourself. And you're among those. How about them apples? I know Drake Larson. You know him? You know Drake Larson? He's a good guy. I know him. He's from Instagram. Um, I heard that he's going to be a big part of Icons of the F4L next year. I don't know how true that is. I heard that rumor. I don't know. But that's what I heard. I don't know. I heard rumors in innuendo. <laughs> I lose track, honestly. As someone asked me that one time before, just kind of like how many times I, like how many wins I had in martial arts and stuff. And I forget after a while. I just kind of, what I do remember is I have one draw on my record. That I remember. I have one draw on my martial art career. I got it when I was 10. I didn't like it. I was not happy. I would much rather lose than not know who won or lost. So that bothered me. I, yeah, I hate it's a confusion between who won and lost. It's like might as well just do rock paper scissors shoot. Yeah, I didn't like that. That was the one draw I ever had on my record. All the rest of them resulted in wins, but I lost track of those two. But it happens. And of course, you know, I work for this that you know that show there, so I get I get to work with and hang out with a lot of people. I'm a guest liaison. That means that I pretty much work with the well-known people and make sure everyone's make sure they're safe. People are being nice to them and making sure things run smooth and things like that. So that's kind of how I get to know a lot of these people. And I'm just kind of gen- I'm genuine. I'm you know that's how it is, right? Yeah. You look like you're ready to fall asleep. You okay? You gonna live? Is it? It's late there, is it not? What time is it there? Even though I just looked at my invisible uh, watch. <laughs> It's 10, but I don't get to sleep until like 12 sometimes. Oh, good for you. Good for you. I also am up late because that's usually when... Fun fact, a lot of the well-known people usually hang out at night when everyone else is usually sleeping because that's when most people are sleeping. That's when a lot of us who have um, been around the block a few times, so to speak, and kind of will do chatting because there's not a lot of people on that time. Like I'll talk to Dane Cook, like Dane Cook's on our show and stuff like that, and we'll talk about that and things of that nature. So yeah, so yeah. Have you heard of icons of the F four L? You okay? I actually, when I was younger, 
Yeah, actually, when I was younger, yeah, um, I came across your channel, but I've, but I didn't really see it, and like I just kind of skipped it because I like I've never seen it, but I so, looked up. My friend told me to look it up when I was like ten, but I'm like, <laughs> oh, and I actually really liked. Um, I really <laughs> liked your music on Spotify. Oh, I appreciate that. I also have the podcast on Spotify and a lot of friends on there, too. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, you'll be on there soon enough, I think. I think you'll be on there soon enough. I believe in you. I think you got a lot of potential um, and whatnot. How do, you, how do you think? What do you think about? You ever watch wrestling? That's That's another common question that we ask people here. Like pro, like wrestling oh, yeah. on television. You watch that on television. Uh, we don't normally get wrestling, but when we do, yeah. Okay, so I've got uh, wrestling a few times. Yeah, do you like pro wrestling or no? Uh, it's okay I if mean, you don't. Is, I don't judge people. <laughs> this is my first year, like getting into wrestling, but I've seen it a few times and got interest uh, interested in it. Like, go, 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 go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Nice. Long, but... nice, nice, interesting. I like wrestling. So. Yeah, I think you like performing. Is that cor- Is that a fair assumption? You like to perform? Oh yeah. Yeah, get that. I get that. I think you will be. I think you will. Um. So, if you're in a horror movie, right? Who is the horror villain you do not want to mess with? Or who is the villain you want to fight? Uh, how about both? Okay, go ahead. So the first one, the villain I don't want to mess with, is Joker because he keeps figuring out how to get out of the jail. <laughs> when there's like when a normal person of an IQ of like a hundred, maybe, mm-hmm. or no, not a hundred, like maybe <laughs> like fifty. Mm-hmm. Um. They won't be able to get out. Maybe like 60 or 70. They might figure out a way to get out, but they won't be able to. Yet Joker looks up and wow. is able literally to get out of the cell <laughs> and find and finds Batman just to pick on him. And then gets put right back to jail. Might as if you if you're just gonna keep escaping from jail, might as well do something other than pick, pick on Batman. I think the issue is they keep locking him into Arkham Asylum, which I think is a mental hospital prison type thing versus an actual prison. And then... I, I think asi- the asylum is actually a mental hospital for j- criminally insane. I don't know if they actually have a jail jail. That's his biggest issue. But you're right on that. One, and then the one um, I would want to fight um, uh, I forgot his name. You forgot his name. What's he, he like, in? I don't know, but it's like he's for some reason he he's like really slow. There's a I bunch of those. Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, they're all slow, <laughs> but yet they catch everybody. I don't want to. But... Huh? I mean, well, I probably I could probably escape Michael Myers because instead of teleporting all the time all the time like freaking Jason does somehow yeah but he he follows you but I could but I was thinking about like crouching down and if he like thought I was hiding behind a corner and went to the other corner I would probably already have like a weapon Mm -hmm. do something I mean either way I'd probably still die (laughs) But, well, no, because th- those guys don't kill kids anyway. Yeah. Generally, they won't. There are some exceptions to some people, though. They'll probably pick on them. Huh? They'll probably pick on them. Like, oh, they'll pick on them. They'll, sca- they'll just... scare you. They just won't kill you normally. They have some morals. Pennywise, on the other hand, or Art the Clown, they're a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, a lot different, oh, actually. Okay. It, I would not be scared to fight because if a group of kids could do it, then obviously I could do it. That's a group of kids. You're gonna do it by yourself. Uh, I'm, I mean, I might bring one of my friends, but oh, there you go. That's a, that's the way to do it. That's it. 
all they had to do was um basically stab him a bunch of times. Or be him. able to outrun your friend, right? <laughs> you bring the friend that's I the slowest do... one, and then you make sure you can outrun them. That's what you do. That's okay. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things I wrote in high school, because I used to like to write, I still like to write. I wrote a thing about how you would make uh, Jason and Freddie good guys. I know, right? <laughs> I said, well, you know, if they did, if they actually saved Jason from drowning, I don't know necessarily if he would have been as nasty as he is. Why would his mother flip out? Why would that start anything if they did their jobs, right? And then the other part is yeah. Robert and Freddy Krueger. <laughs> He is not doesn't have the nicest childhood. He was bullied a lot by everybody and everything. And sometimes when that happens, that can turn people, well, into Freddy Krueger. Um, yeah. So there was that. But I said, well, what if someone was to be nice and someone was to go up to, you know, Freddy when he was younger and actually was nice to Freddy versus being jerks? So I wrote this whole paper, got an A- minus on it. They said, how dare you make these people look like good guys? <laughs> Sorry, I made it make sense. <laughs> huh? At least got an A-minus. I got an A-minus like a on it. Yeah. Well, writing is one of my, uh, one of the misconceptions a lot of, about wrestlers or people who do like entertainment or whatever is that we're not smart. And <laughs> I graduated high school with honors, even though I still wanted to go into pro wrestling because that was my first goal. I wanted to be a pro wrestler since going live. Um, and then in high school, six months before I graduated high school, I started a wrestling school. And then I did both regular high school and wrestling school. So I'd leave, I'd do high school thing. And I was still in those high school teams at that time too. Soccer in the fall, wrestling in the winter, and then swimming in the fall, in the spring. So three different, you know, one sport per, per season. And then I had wrestling school that started around November. So I went to pro wrestling school after that. So I'd go from school, get done with that. Then I would go on a train to go to wrestling school. And I was taught by Killer Kowalski. You probably never heard of him. But the school that I was trained at was also the same school. Guys like Triple H, uh, China, they were all trained at my school. They were obviously before me. But guys I trained with were guys like AJ Styles, John Cena, and people of that nature that came from my school. Well, your eyes went big for some reason. What's the matter? Are you okay? Oh, uh, yeah. I had Falling something. asleep. You're eye. tired? I said John no, Cena. Your eyes, you know who John Cena is? Uh, yeah. Um, He's just some apparently- guy. Uh, my friend, my friend got an encounter with him. He shook his hand, and Did he almost broke his hand. He almost and broke his hand, huh? That's fun. His hand almost like folded. Like chill. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I forgot. Or maybe it was my friend's dad. But yeah, when he was younger, he uh, shook his hand. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I, I never got broken. I never had my hand broken by him, but I met him many times. We're, early, early on, he was a guy. The, when I worked with John Cena, he wasn't John Cena. I worked with him when he was the prototype. And back then, I was Jazz Vengeance, the good guy. And I was also a lot bigger, a lot more in shape back then, too. But um, he, he was someone who I had a long history with because we grew up in the same area. And he used to put himself as from the mean streets of West Newbury, Massachusetts. And uh, what's funny about that is West Newbury is like the biggest money city in the area. And there's like there's no such thing as the mean streets um, of West Newbury, which is why it was funny. And um, when we had to work together in the wrestling, like our companies would work together and I had to work the prototype. And that was what his character then. Then he went to be a, he was a bodybuilder before, you know, before he was a wrestler. I don't know if you knew that, but he wanted to be a bodybuilder first. And then he went back from being a bodybuilder and went back to wrestling. So, and he was shy (laughs) being a bodybuilder at first. And uh, 
So he had to get over the fact being shy so he could go into bodybuilding. And then he went into being wrestling, obviously. And then it's opposite now, obviously. Because, you know, wrestling. You know, Matt you've done like wrestling. Huh? Yeah. He's like a role model. Just he tries to be. Model. Yeah, he's doing all right, I guess. The Rock does similar things. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's another guy. Dwayne Johnson, yeah. he's done a couple of things too. You know, some little guy, some rock, I don't know. <laughs> There's people. <sighs> What's funny is um, my wife, who's a veteran, we she just got to go to the show for free that was up in our neck of the woods. And I was actually out, out back hanging out with CM Punk and all those guys. And uh, I didn't actually get to watch the show though. So I don't know how the show was, but I was hanging out back and hanging around with everybody and talking to people and the usual ways it is. Uh, who, have, who's the most famous person you met out of curiosity? Since you asked met? me all the people I've met. Uh, I th- the most famous person I've met maybe had like probably like 3,000 followers. Um, and it was like back when I was younger and um, I forgot her name. 3,000 followers, huh? Is that yeah, what it means to be famous? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. That's the most famous person, but um, she, for some reason, I think her name was like, um, it started with like an R. Ronda Rousey. <laughs> She's a UFC fighter. I know her too. <laughs> Uh, it was... Oh, Recep. <clears throat> she used to be... Her channel was called Recep. She had 3,000 followers, but then mm. for some reason she quit YouTube and did something else, but I walked past her and I recognized her because I watched her channel for like a few months. Was she nice <laughs> to you? And then I... Oh, yeah. She, <laughs> she had quite a few fans, mm. but then her channel got delayed or two hmm. but she was surprised that i re- that i knew her from her channel because it was like maybe f- like a month after her channel got took off mm-hmm. but yeah sorry i get you cool well i have a feeling you'll meet yeah. many more other people throughout your lifetime so that'll be a good time do you like meeting famous people or do you or do you prefer or does it matter how big they are? It doesn't really matter. That's good. Because I always treat people the same no matter who they are. <laughs> it's just me. But, you know, it's cool, you know, because remember, at the end of the day, they're just people. They just have different jobs. You know, it's a lot. Is that? It's people, it's people know them a lot more than, so, than people know some others. You know, as far as the follower thing goes, you know that I delete half a dozen people almost every single day who follow me because if I think they're creeps or something like that, I'm deleting them. I don't want them following me Um, because I am very particular about who I associate with and who I communicate with. Um, People like yourself, I respect what you do and I think what you're doing is great stuff, which is why I will, you know, I'll encourage you to do what you're doing. But I don't like creeps. I don't like weirdos. I don't like people who don't have anything on their accounts. I, if people give me a weird vibe, I'm done. I, I just get rid of them. So my day usually starts with me removing about 60 people a day from who follow me. So I guess theoretically, I probably would have more if I look more about who, how many people follow me versus the quality of people who follow me. Um. I guess that's just me because I, I would prefer so you, having what's up. So you like, you'd rather have someone that has like sanity over someone that's just like a number there to annoy you. I would rather no, have people. Sanity. I would rather have people who. Where'd you go? Well, there you are. You disappeared. I thought you went to okay, the vortex. Well. 
I, I <laughs> prefer having people who have a personality and have something who have a goal and have an ambition or have something going for them uh, versus people who just like to be there just to be a number. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I interact with everybody who I can. If someone sends me a message, I respond to every single person I can. Um, that's just something I taught. I was taught in wrestling school. That's how you treat your fans. That's how you treat other people. If someone takes the time to reach out to you, you respond to it. So that's why I respond to everybody. But when they're, you know, creeps and they're doing these other things, I'm like, I don't have time for that. I just get rid of them. Plus, I also look at the people who, if they're following me, then they're probably looking at everyone who I'm following. And I don't want them bothering people like yourself, for example. So I'll get rid of them. Because I don't want them bothering people like you or anybody else who follows me. Does that make sense? I I yeah. care more about people than I care about numbers, if that makes a sense. So that's kind of how I work. I mean, and to be fair and to be honest, until probably, what, 2019 or 2020, I, I was barely on Instagram. Because I was too busy working. I was working. At that point, I was writing for one of the biggest wrestling companies out there. And... I, you know, had to come home and work from home. That's how I found Instagram again. And people were amazing yeah. people. So that's how that works. You know. So how did you, how did you find my account? You were recommended, I think, because many people who I follow are people who are, you know, people who do various things. And I think a lot of the things someone says, Hey, follow me. If that's something I think that their goal is, if there's something that they want to do in their life. And if I can see something special and they have a goal, I'll follow them. Like you, I think one of your things is, Hey, follow me. I said, okay, I'll follow you. So I did. And uh, you're entertaining. You're, you're uh, a lot of the times, sometimes when I get busy and whatever else, um, you know, you have some very comical things you'll do. I think they're very amusing. I also think that you have a lot of potential in the long run to do other things too. I think you have a voice also as far as you are good at communicating. As you disappeared, he's walking around. <laughs> I was trying to fix my thing. I get it. No worries, okay. man. You're good. You're good. But in general, that's how I think I think that's how it works. And also, I don't remember how long ago that was, to be honest. I I don't get to do a lot. I don't also have a lot of time to do a lot of things. But when I do, I like to pop up when I can. And you are entertaining. I like to see your interactions and things like that. I think it's fun. I just don't like to see when people are being mean to you and doing crazy things and things like that. That's why I can't deal with that. So I'm out. <laughs> Um, so don't take it personal. Really, What's up? I realized uh, apparently I like the time that I get on and like do my lives is like a time that you only have time to get on. I try. I like eight. I, I try to, but also I try to, you know, I always, you know, I'm not like everybody else. I want to make sure, you know, I say how you doing and things like that, because that's how it should be. Um, because yeah. you said a bunch of times you just wanted to talk to people. I guess I've seen that said in your thing a few times. I think you said something about depression one time before, too. And, um, in one of your videos, I think you said something about depression, and that's something that I, I thought was intriguing because a lot of people don't talk about those things. So, I, you know, myself, I, I want to make sure everyone's okay. That's one of the reasons I want to make sure you're okay and stuff, and also, no one's giving people a hard time because I don't like bullies. So if I see someone who's getting bullied, I will do my best to make sure that they know that I think they're awesome and that I will, you know, go out of my way to make sure they know that they're awesome and that they're not going to be, I'm not going to tolerate bullying people so far. So that's that deal. Yeah. Do you deal with depression? What? Is that that is something I read, correct? Isn't that something you posted? Yeah. It is something I posted. Well, I'm not diagnosed with depression, but some but when um when I'm alone, um 
I just like sometimes I just when I'm feeling alone, I just obviously I feel lonely because I'm alone. Duh. But mm -hmm. I just and I you, just sit there and like I, I contemplate my life. Contemplate it's your like, life. What am I? Yeah, what am I doing with my life? So. That's what technically you everyone. Technically, everyone has depression. And that's exactly what like, I said. That's what I said to you, too. I said everybody has that. Everyone has that aspect. And all honesty, fun fact, if you were to sit down in a park bench and 20 people would have walked by, literally, you could diagnose every single one of them with something. But it's not a, for me personally, I look at people versus a diagnosis anyway. So that's one of the reasons why uh, you know when i hear someone's having a hard time i reach out to one because i genuinely want to make sure they're okay because i don't want to see people sad like yourself i like to make people happy and i like to make people feel like they're doing something and that they're you know they know they're worth more yeah. you know so there's that you look tired so i'm going to let you go get ready for your night and it's cool yeah. does that make sense though yeah. So before you go, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you so they can keep track of the amazing things you're going to do? You guys can find me on Instagram at DrakeBoy5. And if you don't have Instagram or you prefer not to look at Instagram, you can find me on TikTok at, um, I think it's Drake Larson. D R A K E L A R S O N. So mm -hmm. cool yeah. stuff. But what do you I, think about Drake? What do you think about Drake Larson coming to icons of the F4L in 2024? What? What do you think about Drake Larson coming to icons of the F4L in 2024? Uh, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll chat with you more about it later. But uh, I think you're doing great work. Congratulations on everything. I'm proud of you. And um, I know people who are listening are eager to learn more. And I think that you're go only starting. So I wish you the best. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> Glad we got you on. Keep up the great work. And we'll be in touch. And may all your dreams come true. Peace, brother. Thank you for having me. Did you have any other questions yeah, before you go? Yeah, peace for me. Um, no. Do you, have, do you have any shout outs or anything like that? Oh, um, I guess I could shout out one of my friends from Instagram. Okay, go ahead. Shout out whoever you want. Um, Now's your time to shine. I I, I want to shout out um, uh, Jace Byron, I think, or Jace Byron on Instagram. You could probably find him. He has like a... Uh, a truck it's like all red but it's like a truck with a red jacket anyways good night everyone peace brother have a good night be safe keep up the good work and enjoy your weekend brother you too